Good evening and welcome to this edition of ECISD Live. My name is Scott Murray and I'm the superintendent of Ector County Independent School District. And it is my pleasure to welcome each of you this evening. In fact, tonight we're adding a new group of audience members. We typically broadcast live on YouTube, on Facebook and on Twitter. And tonight for the first time we add our LinkedIn audience. So four different uh, audiences tonight all joining us in this one venue. So again, LinkedIn, welcome uh, to this, your first opportunity to access us and uh, experience this edition of ECISD Live. We are singularly focused tonight on one topic, and that one topic is the bond, Bond 2022. Not James Bond, but the bond that our trustees have called and scheduled for the month of May. My job tonight is to walk you through uh, the details and all of the information contained within that bond. And your opportunity tonight is to listen and absorb and ask questions. Uh, you may submit your questions in the format that you're watching, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So those four formats, feel free to submit your questions there. Uh, we've got folks that are going to be monitoring the chat tonight. And some of your questions will be answered in the chat, while other questions will be answered uh, live online. And so we'll keep our eyes on those and, again, walk through this presentation. So once again, sit back, relax, hopefully you have a big bucket of popcorn. There's a lot of information to share tonight. And I encourage you to ask questions. Again, submit those questions in chat and we'll address them in chat as we go through the show. And also uh, we'll bring those questions up at the end and hit some of those live on air. So without further ado, let's bring up our presentation. Here we go, there it is, all right. And so welcome to Bond uh, 2022. Hopefully you will uh, enjoy this experience and learn a little bit about uh, what the future holds for ECISD. So who are we? Uh, we have changed a lot. As many of you know, this year we are celebrating our 100th anniversary, 100 years of existence as a school district. And we have certainly changed in the last 100 years. We currently serve 32,000 students in Ector County. Uh, we have 4,200 employees uh, that serve those kids every day. Those employees range from bus drivers and cafeteria workers, teachers, custodians, principals, et cetera, a lot of different folks coming together uh, that are part of Team ECISD to make sure that uh, the needs of our students are met every day. We have 43 schools in Ector County Independent School District, um, and we started with one school, a singular two-story building, 100 years ago, and, and certainly today as our population has grown, uh, we've built schools over the last many years to make sure that we're addressing their needs. 60% uh, of the students that we serve today uh, live in poverty. In fact, that statistic, we have changed that a little bit. Uh, we've gotten uh, a few more students of poverty this year. So in fact, most recently, 62% uh, of our students are living in poverty. And then as you can see on the screen, 78% of our students are Hispanic, 15% white, 4% uh, African-American, and then 3% of our students uh, represent um, other races. And so that's who we are as an organization and those that serve children and, and, and our, our children themselves. Several years ago, the Board of Trustees established a set of goals for ECISD, and these goals are the goals that all 4,200 members of our team uh, adhere to. We are evaluated based upon um, our success with these goals. The first one is about overall academic performance. When the goal was developed in 2018, 32% uh, of our students were performing at or above grade level in all academic areas, reading, math, science, and social studies. By the year 2024, uh, we hope uh, that 60% um, are of our students will be performing at or above grade level. So work to do in the next two and a half years to make sure that we can reach that goal. Secondly, uh, we all know the value of reading and the importance of that in our lives. Currently, 35% of our students uh, were reading on grade level, and that is at third grade or above or excuse me, in third grade, 35% of our students reading on grade level or above. We'd like to be at 45% by the year 2024. So work to do there. And lastly, a post-secondary goal. We in the state of Texas call this college career military readiness. Uh, currently 56% of our students are on their way to post-secondary readiness. We'd like to be at 65% 
by the year 2024. And towards the end of the presentation, I've got a few updates for you on some of these numbers. I think you're, uh, that might put a smile uh, on your face. All right. In order for us to move the needle for our students, in order to uh, ensure that those goals are reached uh, by 2024, we had to think differently about our organization. We had to make sure that the work that we are doing every day with the students of this district um, is the type of work that will make a difference in the lives of our students. And so we uh, designed a strategic plan uh, that addresses three aspects of our organization, three areas that we know are important. First, uh, the learning of our children. Uh, secondly, the development of the talented individuals within ECISD. And the third area we call foundational excellence, making sure that uh, we have a solid foundation on which to build. So a few uh, strategic plan highlights that I'll update you on. You can see uh, these on your screen. Uh, first, in the area of learning journey, we've expanded pre-K. Uh, we started that last year. Uh, we took our pre-K program from half day to full day. And then this year, we've expanded pre-K in which we now have three-year-old students. So over the last uh, two years, we've, we've expanded pre-K uh, two different times. First, going from half day, full day for four-year-olds. And then secondly, moving our third graders, really accepting uh, th three-year-olds uh, for the very first time. So excited about those pre-K investments. Uh, the second thing you'll see is high impact tutoring. We recognize that one of the most effective ways to help our students overcome some of the challenges uh, that we uh, have as, that were a part of uh, the, uh, the effect of the pandemic uh, specifically was uh, high impact tutoring. That is one of the most effective ways for us to address the learning needs of our children. So today in ECISD, 6,000 students at the elementary, middle school, and high school level have one-on-one uh, -on -one tutors, again, provided by the school district. All of those tutors, uh, they live in cities around the country. Uh, these are virtual tutors that spend 30 minutes to an hour uh, with our kids throughout the week, excited that our students, 6,000 of them, in fact, uh, have this one-on-one -on -one tutoring experience. And then the school year itself. Uh, several years ago, our students were going to school 169 days, and we knew that just wasn't enough. Uh, data clearly indicated that our kids need more time uh, academically to make sure that they are meeting the needs um, of our community. And so we've added 11 days to our school year, going from 169 to 180 days. Uh, in addition to that, we've added another 30 days uh, to the summer months for our elementary students. So now our elementary kids, kindergarten through fifth grade, have an incredible opportunity uh, through summer learning uh, to attend school for an additional 30 days. So a total of 210 academic days are possible for our elementary kids. Excited about uh, that uh, aspect of learning for our kids. And then our teachers, uh, we need to invest in the talented individuals of ECISD. And we've really started those early investments with uh, our, our teachers and our principals. A few of the strategies that I'll lift up for you tonight. First of all, strategic staffing. We have rethought the position of the traditional teacher. We now have some teachers in Ector County Independent School District that teach half time and coach their peers uh, for the other half of their day. Those teachers are compensated uh, at a much higher level than their peers because they've taken on that additional leadership opportunity. We also are a part of a program in Texas called the Teacher Incentive Allotment. Uh, this provides a high level of additional compensation for our most effective teachers. Teachers this year in mathematics and reading that are growing students at an exceptional rate. Um, and so we're excited to do that. In fact, because of the teacher incentive allotment this year, for the very first time, we will be able to announce that we have got teachers in ECISD that are making over $100,000 a year in compensation because of the incredible work that they're doing with students. Again, that is because of the teacher incentive allotment. Excited to bring that to the teachers of Ector County Independent School District. And then the, the third opportunity that you see there for our educators tonight is uh, national board certification. Uh, when you select a doctor, you want to make sure that your doctor is board certified. Uh, when selecting an attorney, you want to make sure that your attorney or perhaps even your accountant is board certified. In education, we have that same opportunity for teachers. And in ECISD, thanks to a generous $2 million grant from the Permian Strategic Partnership, uh, we're able to fully pay for our teachers uh, all of our teachers, uh, pre-K through 12th grade, including librarians and our um, 
or counselors to become national board certified teachers. We currently have approximately 60 teachers going through that process and we'll, uh, are excited to welcome hundreds more over the next several years as they become a board certified teachers. So some really powerful investments that we're making in those that serve and meet the needs of our children on a daily basis. And the last area that you see is our foundational excellence. It's important uh, that you invest, uh, that we invest in the foundation of this organization so that we can ensure the success of our students. A couple things you'll see there. One is broadband access. We learned during the pandemic in particular that 39% of our students either didn't have internet access in their home or had a marginalized internet access. It was of such a low quality that they weren't able to do what they needed to do to engage fully in the teaching and learning environment. And so we've been uh, really fast and furious over the last couple of weeks or a couple of years to bring um, a, affordable high-speed broadband access to families throughout Hector County. Uh, SpaceX is one of the partners that we brought to the table. Uh, they're currently providing their Starlink uh, broadband access to multiple families within our community. In addition to that, we've uh, gathered a coalition of community leaders, city leaders, county leaders, uh, business leaders, and uh, healthcare leaders to come together to create a broadband solution for our entire community. We feel it's important that every family in Ector County, no matter where they live, north, south, east, or west, uh, that every family has an opportunity to, to have access to high-speed, affordable broadband. And so the school district is a part of the Connector Task Force, a task force of individuals that is working hard to make sure that every family has that opportunity. Over the last couple of years, we've purchased 37,000 devices uh, handheld mobile devices for our students. So today in Ector County Independent School District is a part of our foundation. Uh, every single child pre-K through 12th grade has access to their own device uh, that they can use at home or at school to support uh, their learning needs. And then free feeding. Uh, we know that uh, curricular materials, uh, technology, all of those are important to the learning process. But if a child is hungry, it becomes very difficult, if not impossible to learn. And so Extra County ISD now feeds free of charge every child every day, Monday through Friday, breakfast and lunch. Again, that's every day. In fact, this year we will serve over 6.2 million meals alone. Uh, again, for every student in ECISD, we know the importance of a healthy diet. We know the importance of a full stomach and how that contributes to the learning of our children. So we will continue to do that, uh, hopefully for uh, years to come. So those are some of the highlights of our strategic plan. And so what is that work doing for Ector County ISD? You can see that already in these early stages of our strategic plan, and even in the middle of a pandemic, we've been able to see some pretty exciting results. In fact, uh, this year for the first time, we saw uh, the level of kindergarten readiness uh, increased by 13%. And that is directly attributed uh, to the work of our pre-K teachers um, as they embraced uh, kids for the very first time for a full day pre-K experience. We know that that is successful and our data clearly indicate that making that investment in full day pre-K is paying off for our students. At the high school level, our high school students, we've seen a 40 point increase in our SAT results on the part of our high school students. In addition to that, be, because of that 40 point increase, we now rank 15 points above the state of Texas. Uh, we haven't been before or above the state of Texas in prior years, but today uh, for the first time, we can say that our kids, uh, their average SAT score ranks 15 points above the average score in the, in the state of Texas. So excited for that tremendous growth and kudos to the teachers and the students that are making that a reality at the high school level. In addition to that, we are now uh, holding on to the highest graduation rate that we've had in two decades. In 20 years, we now have the highest graduation rate. So again, kudos to our teachers uh, for the work that they're doing with, with our students and for those individuals that have supported our kids throughout their journey through, through high school. In addition to that, um, if you'll remember earlier, we talked about one of our board goals by the year 2024. We hope that 65% um, of our students will be uh, post-secondary ready, that they'll be college, career, military readiness. But as you can see on the screen this year, we've increased by seven percentage points. 63% uh, of our students 
are now ready for a post-secondary experience, which is equal to the state of Texas. So excited that our students are just as prepared as students across the state of Texas to move on to a post-secondary experience. So again, kudos to all of the teachers and counselors and, and administrators that have been a part of the lives of these kids to, to help them attain that point. So good things are happening in Ector County Independent School District and the adjustments that we are making and will continue to make have certainly led to uh, positive results on the part of our students. Uh, exciting things are happening within our district. As a part of our foundation, we recognize that actual physical structures, the buildings, uh, are an important part of that. And so our board of trustees several years ago uh, took under or took on a, the task of conducting a facility review. They pulled a group of community leaders together, um, parents, uh, business leaders, uh, members of our own team. All of these folks were a part of what we called the facility review committee. Their job uh, was to work with our architects and engineers to conduct um, a complete study of every building in Ector County Independent School District, and then to assess those buildings, basically to give them a grade on their condition. And that the facility review committee uh, used those data, that master plan, if you will, uh, to pr prepare a bond referendum. And you can see um, on uh, the slide before you that that work started uh, in 2020, and we are right now uh, seeing the culmination of that activity. We've a bond program is not an unusual phenomenon for our district. In fact, if you look at this slide. Uh, in 2001, uh, Ector County Independent School District held a bond referendum for $89.5 million. Uh, and that bond did a couple of things. One, it built two elementary schools to handle the growth of ECISD. Also uh, did some renovations and adjustments to campuses around the building. So uh, those bonds touched many of the schools in ECISD. And then in 2012, so 11 years later, the district held another bond referendum, a little over $129 million, that at that time actually built three elementary schools um, and then added some additions to Odessa High School and Permian High School and made also some repairs and supported some maintenance issues around campuses. So again, 10 years ago was the last bond we held in ECISD. And as you can see, the preponderance of those dollars uh, dealt with the elementary growth that we were experiencing and in fact, continue to experience um, in our school system. We also held uh, a few years ago a tax ratification election. In the year 2018, a TRE uh, was held and a tax ratification election is actually different from a bond referendum. A, a bond election, those dollars are used to build new schools, uh, to renovate schools, and to take care of significant maintenance issues, uh, perhaps invest in technology as well. So there are a variety of things that uh, you can do in a bond referendum. But a tax ratification election supports the general fund. And as you can see from the items on the screen, uh, the majority of that tax ratification election went to uh, providing raises for all employees in ECISD. In fact, because of this, we've been able to take the starting teacher salary uh, from four years ago at $44,000 and raise it uh, to what it is today, $57,000. So a $13,000 increase in uh, the starting salary for our teachers. And all of that is because um, of the members of our community in 2018 voting for that tax ratif ratification election. So we are deeply uh, indebted to our community because of uh, that opportunity. In addition uh, to raises for our teachers, we had campus security upgrades. Upgrades Now it is uh, our, our uh, staff members uh, use uh, an ID card in order to get to re uh, gain access to each of our campuses. And then we have uh, other devices that allow uh, for the access of parents and other guests uh, that, that maintain, uh, that have a need to enter our campuses. But all of that was to ensure the safety of our students. New school buses uh, were also purchased as a part of the bond, uh, or excuse me, the TRE referendum in 2018. And then roof repairs in 2016 and 17, we had quite a bit of hail damage to many schools in ECISD. In fact, some of you may have experienced that uh, same hail damage on your homes. And in order to pay for uh, the deductibles uh, as a part of that roof repair, uh, the tax ratification election helped us to make sure that we were able to make those deductible payments so that we could in turn uh, ensure that all of our roofs are being being prepared 
And as you can see, we've got a few more projects left to, left to continue. It takes quite a while to repair the, the many roofs in ECISD. And so once again, the, we are uh, deeply uh, grateful to our community for the passage of that TRE. That singular investment has made a significant impact upon the work that we were able to do and that we are able to do in ECISD on behalf of the children uh, that we serve. So the bond referendum, um, as I mentioned earlier, the um, the Board of Trustees created about two years ago a facility review committee. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, that committee uh, paused. And once the pandemic started to ease, we reformed that committee as a bond committee. Uh, 61 members of that bond committee, uh, again, uh, business community leaders, uh, parents, uh, some of our staff members, a variety of of individuals within our community came together and began to look at that facility review study and then create a bond proposal. In addition to uh, just looking at that study, they, they actually analyzed quite a bit of data. And in fact, they gathered some research of their own. One of the things that this committee did is to reach out to 1,000 registered voters in Ector County, uh, representing all different dem demographic groups. And they asked them a series of questions and then our bond committee used all of those data to inform uh, the recommendation that they made to our board of trustees. So during the month of January, January of 2022, the bond committee uh, presented the following recommendations to the board of trustees. And in turn, the board of trustees accepted those recommendations. And then in February, the board of trustees uh, voted to call an election. And our bond election contains two separate propositions. Uh, the first proposition you're looking at on the screen, Proposition A, is for a total of a little over $215 million, and it contains three items. The first item is the maintenance and life cycle repair uh, for buildings across Ector County Independent School District. And so a little bit of context, um, we have 43 campuses that are in ACISD, the average age of our campus is 51 years of age. Uh, but if you'll notice, based upon the graph, you can see that 31 of our schools are actually 61 years of age or older. And so that's almost half of our schools uh, that have aged to at least 61 years of older and with our oldest school uh, being 84 uh, years of age. So there's quite a bit of age with the schools. And these dollars would be used for the maintenance and repair. As buildings get older, uh, they have a significant need for maintenance and repair to make sure that, that they are safe uh, to be occupied by the students and the staff members that we serve. Uh, plumbing needs, uh, electrical needs, uh, HVAC needs, so a variety of those basic foundational as well as life safety needs. Uh, those foundational needs will be addressed uh, using this particular portion of uh, Proposition A. The second item that you see in Proposition A is the creation of a career and technical education facility. Uh, this facility uh, would be approximately $70 million, so 150,000 square feet. Uh, we would take many of the CTE programs that are currently dotted around our district and put them in one location. Our students would have two options on which to engage with our CTE center. Uh, some students would choose, if they so choose, could remain there all day and actually earn a high school diploma from the CTE Center. We have a feeling that most of our students, however, will choose to remain at their existing high school and simply be transported back and forth. And many of our kids have that experience today with career and technical education. Uh, so you can see it will serve as a hybrid, and that's the concept of hybrid. Some students remaining there all day, while other students, in fact, probably the majority of students would transition in and out uh, throughout the day and only experience their career and technical education uh, programming. The facility uh, would offer three or excuse me, 23 different programs of study. Uh, some of those programs are programming that we currently offer. Uh, this would just give them a, a new space in which to do that. Uh, and then some of the program would be things that we do not offer today. However, the local business and industries are in need of kids with that type of training or need of employees. And so our students uh, need to be trained in those areas. So we would be adding uh, some new career and technical education pathways for our students that represent the needs of our business and industries within our area. And finally, one exciting piece of this is we've been in conversations for many, many months now with Odessa College. And Odessa College would actually be partnering with us 
in the, in the uh, development of this career and technical education facility. Basically, they would be housed uh, in this facility and we would jointly be able to teach courses to our students so that they would earn uh, college credit at the same time they're earning high school credit. That's an incredible opportunity that uh, students are allowed to do uh, in Texas. And but that only happens when a local school district such as ECISD partners with um, a local community college or university. And so in this in this sense, we're able to do that with Odessa College. Really grateful to uh, Dr. Greg Williams and his team for uh, working collaboratively with our folks to make this a reality for our students. There are three options in Proposition um, A, and so the third option is a, an investment in technology. Uh, we recognize uh, that uh, we made an investment in the classrooms of ECISD about 10 years ago, and that technology has uh, stood the test of time, uh, but, the, but the time uh, for that technology has expired, and we need to replace the classroom technology that is in every single classroom in ECISD. And so this particular part of the bond package would replace uh, existing technologies, overhead projectors, et cetera, uh, is audiovisual equipment that is currently in every classroom. So every, every school, every classroom would be touched and positively impacted by this particular part of the bond. And so those are the three items that you'll find in Proposition A. We also have a second proposition, Proposition B. And there's a singular item in Proposition B, and that is the construction of a new high school. It will be a comprehensive high school uh, designed to hold between 2,500 and 2,800 students, uh, which is about 400,000 square feet of space, so a large facility. It'll be built uh, on a 100-acre piece of property. In the year 2015, um, ECISD purchased 100 acres for a little over $2 million, and that 100 acres of property uh, is located at the intersection of Yukon Road and Fadri Road. And so that location has been identified as the location that, in which we will build uh, this new high school. Um, the new high school will offer some relief uh, to our existing high schools. As many of you know, we currently operate five high schools. Three of them are small high schools, um, OCA, OC Techs, and New Tech. Each of those high schools have approximately 400 students each. Uh, they were designed to hold 400 students, and so they have each reached their capacity. The other two high schools that we have are comprehensive high schools, a Permian High School and Odessa High School. And those two high schools have gone far beyond their capacity. Neither of those schools was designed to hold uh, the amount of students that they currently have. In fact, both of those high schools have close to 4,000 students each. And again, they were not designed to do that. So we must provide some relief uh, for those two high schools. In addition uh, to the number of students, we also have a number of teachers on those two campuses. So between Permian High School and Odessa High School, we actually have 38 teachers that currently do not have classrooms. Uh, we have run out of classrooms uh, on the campus of Permian and OHS. We do not have room to add additional portables. And so those 38 teachers are what we call a floating teachers. They spend their day floating from classroom to classroom and conducting their classes and they use, they transport the materials uh, on a cart. Every time we add a new teacher to either Permian or Odessa, those new teachers become floating teachers. And so that number 38 will continue to increase until we're able to provide an opportunity for our students and our staff members in the future. So those are the two options. Proposition A contains three items. Proposition B contains the construction of a new high school. Total cost for those two bond referendums is approximately... Uh, $398 million when you look at those two together. One of the uh, groups of people that I met with upon my arrival two and a half years ago was a group of people called the TRE Oversight Committee, the Tax Ratification Election Oversight Committee. Uh, this committee was put together uh, by the, the school district and they were charged with overseeing the district's implementation of the tax ratification election, or yes, the tax ratification election. The members of this community were community members themselves, business leaders, uh, parents, others, uh, other stakeholders in the community uh, that were asked to come together to form this committee. And the committee met once a quarter and they received an update from the district um, about the work that was happening in conjunction with the tax ratification election. 
uh, we would like to continue that process when uh, the bond passes. And so we will be creating what we call a bond oversight committee. Once again, it will be a group of community stakeholders that will meet on a quarterly basis. Uh, the district will update these stakeholders on the work that is happening uh, within the bond. Basically, it is the assurance that the promises that we make in the bond would be the promises that we keep as a part of the bond. The Tax Ratification Election Committee uh, did the same thing. They ensured that all of the commitments that the district made during the TRE were indeed met. And, and uh, so we we're very grateful uh, that we had a chance to work with the, with the TRE Oversight Committee. Their work is complete because uh, those projects are now complete. And we look forward to welcoming aboard a bond oversight committee, once again, made up of members of our community. The tax impact of the upcoming election, uh, you can see that represented on your screen. Uh, the passage of Proposition A and B would yield a 15 cent uh, increase in taxes uh, throughout Ector County. Uh, that would average out to about $12 per month on each $100,000 of value. And so for every $100,000 in value, a taxable ba value of a home it would be approximately $12 per month in additional uh, taxes. However, those of you that are 65 years and a in age or older, uh, you know that Texas provides a great incentive for you. And our residents and voters and citizens that are 65 years of age and older and have a homestead, your taxes are frozen. Uh, so your tax rate will not increase, nor will uh, the amount of money that you pay each year in taxes. Um, and uh, so that's good news for uh, those that are 65 and over. In addition to uh, the tax implication, one of the things that Ector County Independent a School District does for every homestead owner in Ector County is to provide a 20% homestead exemption. The state of Texas allows for uh, every school district in the state to provide this opportunity, uh, but that is not what every school district chooses to do. In fact, most school districts actually do not provide uh, this 20% homestead exemption. This is an option for local school districts, but your school district voted many years ago uh, to provide this opportunity. And so you as taxpayers uh, have that 20% homestead exemption available to you. And so what do your taxes pay for? Um, we are a public entity and because we uh, must follow the laws, uh, the public entity laws, the school district laws, if you will, in the state of Texas, as well as the federal government, we have two pots of money with which we work. Uh, the maintenance and operation pot of money and then the interest and sinking pot of money. And you can see from the chart before you that the maintenance and operation pot of money is, is our general fund. Uh, those are the dollars that we use to pay our day-to-day -day expenses, a compensation. In fact, about 87% of our budget is used for compensation. So the vast majority of these general fund, fund dollars are used for compensation. In addition, all of the supplies and materials that students and teachers use on a regular basis also come out of the general fund. We pay our utility bills, our electric bills, our water bills, et cetera. And then we operate a transportation system, well over 100 buses and the drivers and the fuel, all of that uh, comes out of our maintenance and operations budget. The tax ratification election that was held in 2018, all of those dollars flow directly into the maintenance and operations budget. That's how we were able to increase uh, compensation for teachers. That's how we were able to purchase buses, et cetera. The bond package that we're talking about tonight uh, goes into the other uh, side of the house, and that is the interest and seeking, sinking uh, fund uh, pot, the uh, debt service pot, if you will. This is how uh, the school district pays for the new construction of facilities. It is how we pay for the renovation of facilities. Is, is it how we purchase land? Um, it is how we pay for uh, technology infrastructure. So there are a variety of major expenses that we are allowed to use the debt service fund for. And so this particular bond package, uh, all of those dollars will go uh, into this particular fund and we will use those dollars uh, to build once again, a new high school, a new career and technical education center, address the maintenance, the, the significant maintenance and operational needs um, of our schools and, uh, and then invest in technology. And so those items, once again, would be on the debt service side. The bond would take care of that for us. 
So how do we look from a tax perspective compared to other districts? Uh, this chart shows you a group of other districts across the state of Texas that are similar in size to us, approximately 32,000 kids. Uh, these districts may have a, a little fewer or a, little, a few more, but in general, they are districts that are about our student size. And you can see, uh, based upon the, uh, the orange bar, which is ECISD, that our current debt service rate, which is the tax rate that we use to fund the debt service side, uh, we are significantly lower than um, other school districts in similar that are similar in size to us. We the bond referendum calls for a 15 cent tax increase, and you can see that based upon where we currently are, by adding 15 cents to that, we will still be below uh, the other comparison districts across the state of Texas, um, and so that's. Uh, good statistics and good information for you to have as an informed uh, voter in ECISD. And then speaking of finances, uh, we are very proud of the financial picture in ECISD. First of all, we have had consistently uh, clean financial audits in ECISD. So very proud of that fact. Our auditors, uh, it's a pleasure to work with them and they always uh, uh, really commend the work that our finance team does to ensure uh, that we account for every penny that is spent within our system. So clean financial audits. In fact, the last several years, we have not only earned an A in the state financial system, but we've made a perfect score of 100 um, in the last couple of years. And so once again, uh, kudos to our board of trustees and our finance team uh, that ensures that that happens. Uh, so that's our system being really good stewards of public dollars and also ensuring that we um, account for the expenditure of those monies. In addition to that, uh, because of really the passage of the tax ratification election and the improved financial status of ECISD, we've been able to pay off some of our bonds early um, to the tune um, of, of a savings of about $19 million dollars. Once again, so because we've been able over the last two years uh, to pay off some of our bonds early, we've saved taxpayers uh, $19 million in interest payments because of that. In addition uh, to the, the good news in saving money, that actions or those actions have also led uh, to an upgrade in our bond rating. So that's once again, good news for uh, the taxpayers in Ector County that the school district now has um, a healthy bond rating, an improved bond rating because of the investments that we've made as well as the good financial stewardship uh, that is demonstrated by the uh, straight A's and the perfect scores um, of 100. So kudos to our board and our finance team uh, for making those choices. And finally, tonight, voting information. Um, as I mentioned, our Board of Trustees during the month of February called a bond election. Uh, that election will take place on Saturday, May the 7th. Uh, and you can see um, the election day it will take place on multiple locations around the uh, city of Odessa and Ector County. Early voting begins on April 25th. And there is only one location for early voting in this particular election, and that will take place at the courthouse annex. So once again, it's important for everyone to note that early voting begins on April 25th, and that will only occur at one location, which is once again at the courthouse annex. Election day, however, is Saturday, May 7th. Uh, polls open at 7 a.m., and there will be a variety of different polling locations throughout uh, the school district. Uh, this information, is available on the Ector County Independent School District website. You can visit www.ectorcountyisd.org. Uh, we'll put that information in the chat so that all of you have that. And once you get on that website, simply click on Bond 2022. There's a button on the homepage. You can also click the link that's in chat and it'll take you right to that site. Uh, and there is a plethora of information on the district bond site. All of the information that we've talked about tonight, including this presentation itself, uh, will be lo is located on that site. We have a frequently asked question document there. So all of the questions that people have already started to ask, the answers to those questions are there and a lot of other information that we feel you would find helpful. And so once again, you can visit that website to find out more information 
um, about the bond proposal. You're looking at a sample ballot. Um, again, there'll be two propositions, Proposition A and Proposition B. The doc, the, um, the uh, page that you see before you now is Proposition A, uh, the issuance of a $215 plus million dollar bond. And you can see the items spelled out for school buildings, a career and technical education center. So that is the facility uh, that will be built. A security and technology infrastructure, once again, investments in those areas. Um, and then uh, for school buildings, so all of the uh, repairs and maintenance opportunities that we have would be built into those items. And so you can read through uh, Proposition A. And then this is Proposition B. Proposition B contains just one item. And again, that is the construction of a new high school uh, for a total of $183 million. So you can you can read that. You would see both of those uh, on uh, election day when you go to the polls. And again, you have an option to vote for or against. Um, but the language that you see uh, will be exactly the language that you saw tonight. All right. That is uh, Bond 2022. A lot of information uh, and I'm happy to address questions. I know you've had some in chat, several questions uh, that uh, will kind of address live um, that have come up. Let me kind of look at these real quickly. Um, are taxes collected for interest in seeking subject to recapture Robinhood? Some of you may be familiar with the concept. So in the state of Texas, uh, districts that collect uh, large sums of money, in fact, more money than, than perhaps other districts, are subject to what's called recapture. And that is when uh, the district must spend, must send local tax dollars uh, to the state of Texas so that those dollars can be uh, redistributed to districts that are a bit poorer than other districts. Right now, Hector County Independent School District, we are not subject to recapture. Uh, we are not a recapture district. And so our dollars, uh, whether bond dollars or TRE dollars, so neither side of our funds are subject to recapture. Uh, we do not qualify for that. Midland County, our neighbors, uh, they are a recapture district. And so I'm sure that many of you may hear on the news or just uh, read conversations about our neighbors because their district um, is subject to recapture because of the dollars that they take in. We are in a different situation. Um, our property values are much lower. And so we do not take in uh, the kind of money that would require us to send money out. So no. Um, are there two separate bonds? Yes, there are two separate bonds. Prop there are really two separate propositions. Uh, Proposition A, which contains the Career and Technical Education Center, uh, the maintenance and repair items, and then technology. And then you have Proposition B, B, which contains a singular item, and that would be the construction of a new high school. And uh, the ne next question, uh, do you have a location for the future high school in West Odessa? The high school that we are, uh, that's a part of the bond, uh, will be built on a property that is located actually near Ratliff Stadium. It's at the corner of Fodry Road and Yukon Road. In 2015, um, ECISD purchased 100 acres of property, and that property is sufficient for the construction of a new high school. In addition to that, um, as we look at our demographic study and where growth is happening in Ector County, that particular area is the fastest growing area and will have the most need uh, at the earliest amount of time for, uh, for students. And so we have to address that. Um, but one of the things that our bond committee talked about and our board certainly understands is the need for another new high school, not just a, a one, but two. And so the bond committee talked long and hard about the construction of a second new high school. And our board is well aware because of the growth of our school district that we will indeed have to add uh, a fourth high school, which would be a second new high school at some point in the future to address the growth of our district uh, that occurs certainly in, in the West. We see uh, through our demographic data, both today and in the future, that uh, the West is a part of, of Vector County continues to grow, and we're going to have to address uh, th those needs at some point. And it's the same thing with elementary schools and middle schools. Uh, our community, in the survey that we conducted of a thousand registered voters, uh, our community uh, raised the question about uh, schools. The bond committee looked long and hard at additional elementary, middle schools, and high schools. And as we asked those questions to the community, the community was pretty clear 
that they would uh, be responsive to a certain dollar amount. And that was a dollar amount that is under $400 million. And the community also felt that the most important or the most urgent need uh, through the surveying was the construction of a new high school. And so our bond committee made a recommendation to our board uh, that was based upon data that they looked at, uh, information regarding facility use studies, condition index, et cetera, but also uh, the survey that was conducted among the 1,000 voters in ECISD. And so that's how the bond committee really developed their recommendation and our board of trustees uh, voted to call an election. So let me look at some more questions. Uh, one is what are our plans for choice middle schools? I would encourage all of you to watch a board meeting uh, that we held last week. Um, our choice team uh, led by Alicia Severson, they've been working for many months now on analyzing uh, the choices and options in our district. We currently have 13 magnet and choice schools uh, that we operate, and we want to make sure that those choice schools are meeting the needs of our students and of our families. And so they conducted a lot of research, a lot of analysis, and uh, recently uh, announced uh, some new and exciting opportunities uh, that will that that we're exploring right now, but also uh, the fact that the work must continue. We must continue to dialogue with our parents and, and look for opportunities. Uh, so we will be uh, opening uh, a brand new middle years international baccalaureate program. Most of you are aware that currently uh, Odessa High School uh, operates the international program, the Inter international baccalaureate program, the IB program uh, on their campus. Uh, we know and uh, that that program needs a feeder. They need middle school students to feed that program to make sure that it remains healthy. Uh, and also listening to our parents, our, you all as parents were very clear that you want a middle school option that addresses um, the, uh, the needs of, of, of students that are desiring that very rigorous academic content. And so we announced that we will be partnering with the International Baccalaureate Organization uh, to uh, bring an IB middle school program to ECISD. So excited um, about that opportunity. In addition, uh, when the new uh, Career and Technical Education Center opens, we will be removing the existing uh, career and technical programming from New Tech High School. And so that will free up some space uh, for our middle school students. We are not um, building a new middle school is a part of the proposed bond proposal, but our middle schools are, are very full and overcrowded. And so to address some of those needs, we will be working with the folks at New Tech High School uh, to add a new opportunity uh, to the New Tech High School campus and hope to bring between three and 400 middle school students uh, to that campus. So excited about that opportunity in uh, the future as well. So more about that option to come. In addition, we've talked about Montessori. Uh, we have many families that take advantage today of Austin Montessori. Those families have expressed interest in expanding Austin Montessori to a middle school program. And we'll be doing that over the next several years as well, going from a, a K-6 environment, which it is right now, to a K-8 environment. Again, uh, heard that loud and clear from parents and we'll be uh, providing some of those opportunities. So moms and dads pay close attention to our choice work. Uh, there are some really new and exciting opportunities coming your way uh, for kids at every level. So lots of work left to continue, but uh, we've got some really cool options headed your way. Um, Question about, is Ector College Prep going to be funded separately from ECISD? No, uh, Ector College Prep is a charter school within uh, ECISD. It is one of our schools. And so all of the funding from or for Ector County, or excuse me, for Ector College Prep uh, comes directly from um, ECISD. And so we fund them um, as a part of the way that we, the mechanism that we use to fund the other schools in Ector County. Uh, what is the earliest opening possibility of the new high school? Um, so uh, let's talk through what that looks like. First of all, when you build something that is 400,000 square feet, it takes a long time. Um, and so the bond uh, is uh, going to the voters on May 7th. Uh, we have already started to do some pre-work 
Uh, we are already working with architects and engineers who would be interested in building or designing that facility. We are already getting those folks qualified. Uh, we have other uh, types of work that we can do to make sure that on uh, May 8th, we're ready to go and, and begin that work. It will take at least one full year just to design and develop the plans for the new high school. Um, and so that would be from the summer of 2022 all the way through the summer of 2023. Again, just to design and develop and plan for uh, that construction. Uh, once that process is finished, we would we forecast that the first shovel would go in the ground in 2023, and it would take approximately two years to build the new high school. We would anticipate opening that high school uh, for school in August of 2025, so it would be fully open for the class of 2025-2026. Uh, Again, it's about a three-year process, two years of construction and then one year of design and development in order to build a, a high school. Uh, question, uh, with the new high school, would parents be able to choose which high school that they can go to? Those types of decisions will be made uh, in the future. Uh, our board of trustees um, at, at the passage of a bond will uh, look at opportunities, everything from attendance zones and boundaries uh, to choices. Uh, will we have choice opportunities in not only the new high school, but in Permian and o Odessa High School as well? Um, and so those are decisions that will be made in the future, typically uh, two years uh, to a year and a half before you open a new high school, you begin to have those community conversations. And I will tell you, that's what they will be. Um, not while the board is the final decision making uh, entity, and there will be much community engagement as to what those boundaries and what those opportunities will look like for students and families. Uh, in my own personal experience, experiences in other district, um, th there are uh, many opportunities to make that a, a gradual move into a new high school opportunity. So many ways to ensure that kids that potentially have already started their high school journey in one location don't necessarily have to be moved to another location. And so lots of conversations in the future about boundaries and attendance and choice programming. So look forward to those in about a year. All right. That's a lot of information. Uh, tonight. And so let me just close by saying, first of all, thank you uh, for your attention tonight. And thank you for uh, being a part of the work that we do in ECISD. All of the information that we've shared tonight is currently available on the ECISD website. So once again, www.ectorcountyisd.org slash a bond 2022. You can also go to the main website and simply click the button that will take you to uh, the bond program. You'll be hearing lots of information over the next month and a half about the bond really leading up to um, election day. A quick reminder to anybody who is not registered to vote, uh, April 7th is the last day uh, to register to vote in order to be elect, um, eligible to vote for this particular bond election. So once again, if you are not registered to vote, uh, you need to do so by April 7th in order to be eligible to vote in the upcoming election. Uh, again, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, you'll hear lots more about the bond. We welcome your questions. You can submit those on the ECISD website, and we will keep that frequently asked question page uh, as up to date as we can with questions as they arise and then answers uh, that are developed. Appreciate your attention tonight. Once again, thank you for uh, supporting uh, the work that we do in Ector County Independent School District. It is our pleasure uh, to serve and to meet the needs of the children of this community. Thank you and good night.